when I'm not working on my collection of Ronnie James Dio Bossa Nova covers. Holy diver, you've been down too long in the midnight sea. Oh, what's become of me? Gotta get away. I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. I know how to read sheet music, but I just find it a hassle to implement it into my guitar playing. Would that limit me if I want to learn more advanced music theory on the guitar? I remember you saying that you were the same in another video, so how did it affect you? I think as guitar players, we kind of get a free pass on having to be really well versed in sight reading sheet music. I can kind of do it. My sight reading actually is terrible, but over the years, I just feel like it hasn't really cost me a lot of opportunities. You, you don't need to know how to read sheet music to really understand music theory, as long as you kind of know the principles involved, like what the notes are and how notes go into chords and stuff like that. Now, sheet music can be very helpful in explaining uh, like progressions, especially like classical stuff, just to kind of like see how things move and everything like that. But uh, just because guitar lends itself so well to tablature, I think I would say the majority of guitar players don't really need sheet music to achieve what their own goals are. So again, it depends on what your goals are. Like if you want to play maybe like in an orchestra or maybe do more classically oriented stuff, then it's a, it's a huge help and almost a necessity to have. But just from my own personal experience, those were never my goals. So my inability to really master sight reading sheet music hasn't really impacted me to my knowledge thus far. How did you get your YouTube channel going? Did you advertise? And if so, what's some advice to give to YouTube channels trying to increase their followings? So I've been doing the YouTube thing for just a little over a year now. And as of late, it's starting to kind of uh, take off a little bit. I mean, it's nowhere near the size of some of the other channels, but I think it's doing pretty well. And what really helped me out, I remember, because I started making videos and really for like the first seven months, like there wasn't really a lot of anything going on. But uh, somebody posted my learn 100 guitar chords in eight minutes video to Reddit. And I didn't really even know what Reddit was back at the time. It's like a site where you can upvote things. And basically it just got upvoted like a thousand, like thousands of times. And uh, all of a sudden I just had like a base magically. So I never really advertised or anything like that. And I remember I was like looking up a lot of things like, what do you do to start your own YouTube channel and how to do different things? And what I learned is that like every channel is different. So like what you're doing kind of depends on how you want to market it. Like collaborations are really great for some channels, other channels, like they don't really work so well. I know that uh, there's kind of like a fine line between spamming people with your stuff and just trying to get people interested. But I guess what I've learned is like, if you just make quality stuff and entertain yourself, which is kind of my main goal is just to entertain myself while I'm making these videos. It seems like like-minded people are gonna eventually find it somehow. So I definitely think Reddit is like a cool thing to use. Again, there's a fine line between spamming people and just getting people interested too. But you know, just get your friends and stuff to follow you. And eventually over time, as long as you're making quality content, people are gonna find it one way or another. So really my advice is just, uh, Take your time with it. Do something that is interesting to you because I know a lot of people who have like started YouTube channels just to kind of, it's like what they think they should be doing, but they don't really go anywhere because they're not really into it. So you gotta make sure it's something you enjoy because I mean, let's be honest, like YouTube is probably the most awesome thing that humanity has ever really achieved. I mean, you can learn basically anything. For me, it's been great because I have like a cool venue to kind of connect with all you guys and take your questions and stuff like that. And uh, really, Huge YouTube fan. So uh, welcome to the community. If you're doing a channel, hit me up. Let me know how it's going. And uh, yeah, if you have any more specific questions, I'd love to help you out. What is your favorite rap album? Also, what are your guilty pleasures music-wise? Favorite rap album? I'm going to have to go with The Roots, Things Fall Apart, followed closely by the follow-up phrenology. I'm, bi I'm a big Roots fan. And in fact, Questlove was kind of like the reason... He's probably like the most influential drummer as far as me teaching myself to play drums and stuff like that too. So uh, definitely if you don't if you don't know the roots, check them out. But guilty pleasure wise, I have a lot of them for sure. I'm totally into like Nora Jones, if she's considered a guilty pleasure. I think probably my number one would be like Swedish synth pop. And if you know anything about Swedish synth pop, I'm talking about Robin. Robin is kind of amazing, R-O-B-Y-N. If you don't know who she is, Check her out. Just go on like an internet deep dive of her music videos. You will not be disappointed. Her album, Body Talk. Like if I ever have to get up super early and like do something, I put on Body Talk by Robin 
and it just it just gets me hyped. Huge Robin fan. So I guess that's like my guilty pleasure. I swear to God, by the way, I'm like a rock guy. I mean, I know I talk a lot about like uh, synth pop and we're doing Bossa Nova stuff here, but really, trust me, I'm a rock guy through and through. I love all genres of music, but uh, yeah, I guess those are my guilty pleasures. What do you think of Josh Homme? Now we are talking. Josh Homme, I consider kind of like my spirit animal. If you don't know who Josh Homme is, he is the lead singer guitar player of Queens of the Stone Age and Caius before that. And uh, actually my first concert I ever went to was a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert, and Mars Volta and Queens of the Stone Age were also were, uh, opening up for him, right? Mars Volta was very, it was very early Mars Volta, and they actually kind of got booed off the stage to the point that like Flea had to come out and like settle the crowd down, which was kind of strange. But then Queens of the Stone Age came on, and this was right about uh, when Songs for the Deaf was coming out, and No One Knows was like on the radio and stuff, so I kind of had heard that song, but uh, I didn't really know the Queens of the Stone Age. They came out, they're just like, we're Queens of the Stone Age. And they instantly went right into, uh, I think it was Feel Good Hit of the Summer or something like that. And they played the most rocking 25 minute set that was just uninterrupted. They didn't even pause between songs. And it was like, it was like the most badass thing I've ever seen. And it totally changed my life. And the Chili Peppers were amazing. But what I take most from that night was just how hard the Queens of the Stone Age rocked. And I've been a huge Queens of the Stone Age fan ever since then. And Josh Homme specifically, I see them anytime I get a chance. Awesome band, check them out. So for listening homework this week, I want you to check out a song by the Queens of the Stone Age, some of their newer stuff. This one's called I Sat by the Ocean. And I think it's really like a great example, again, of how a super heavy rock dude has kind of matured and kept his sound and just refined it over the years. And he's come out with stuff like this. And I know they're in the studio working on some more stuff. I Sat By The Ocean is, I'll link you to a tab too, because it's a great guitar example of how just to use kind of power chords and moving around and still create like a really interesting, cool progression with really nothing beyond power chords. And it's also like a great two-part thing when you do like the chords over the solo too. So check that out. As always, any comments or questions, hit me up and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.